Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Museum Munchkins. I'm Mr. Nick, and today we are talking all about rabbits. And we're going to start off by singing a rabbit song if you want to stand up on your feet so we can dance and move a little bit during this song. So this song is called, Did You Ever See a Bunny? Because bunny is another word that we use for rabbit, isn't it? So this song is called, Did You Ever See a Bunny? And in this song, we're going to be doing some hopping just like a bunny or a rabbit might do. So can we practice hopping first before we start our song? Can we hop one time? How about let's hop two times, ready? One, two. How about can we hop three times in a row? One, two, three. Very good. So in this song, we're going to be hopping around like some rabbits and we're going to be listening for how we're going to be hopping. Maybe we'll be hopping very fast or very slow or in a circle. Well, we don't know. We'll have to listen to the song and wait for instructions of what the song tells us to do. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Did you ever see a bunny, a bunny, a bunny? Did you ever see a bunny that hops so slow? So let's hop very slow. Hops this way and that way and this way and that way. Did you ever see a bunny that hops so slow? Very slow hopping. Very good. Did you ever see a bunny, a bunny, a bunny? Did you ever see a bunny that hops so fast? Hops this way and that way and this way and that way. Did you ever see a bunny that hops so fast? That's some fast hopping. Did you ever see a bunny, a bunny, a bunny? Did you ever see a bunny that hops backwards? Can you hop backwards? Hops this way and that way and this way and that way. Did you ever see a bunny that hops backwards? Did you ever see that before? And did you ever see a bunny, a bunny, a bunny? Did you ever see a bunny that hops on one foot? Can you stand on just one foot and hop? It takes a lot of balance. Hops this way and that way and this way and that way. Did you ever see a bunny that hops on one foot? Did you ever see a bunny, a bunny, a bunny? Did you ever see a bunny that hops so high? How high can you hop? Hops this way and that way and this way and that way. Did you ever see a bunny that hops so high? Very good. And did you ever see a bunny, a bunny, a bunny? Did you ever see a bunny that hops so low? Let's hop as low as we can, the littlest, tiny little baby hops. Hop this way, and that way, and this way, and that way. Did you ever see a bunny that hops so low? Very good hopping. Now let's hop to a seat and find a seat while I put my guitar away right over here. So that we can talk all about rabbits. So yes, today we are learning all about rabbits. Have you ever seen a rabbit before? Maybe you've seen a rabbit in your yard hopping around or at the park. So we see rabbits all over the place. They're pretty common animals. And in fact, we find rabbits all over the world. We find them on every single continent except way down here in Antarctica. 
where it's very, very, very cold. We find them everywhere else. We find rabbits. So uh, while we're talking about rabbits today, if you think of any rabbit questions, you can write them in the comments and we're going to answer them in just a little bit after we read our story. So yes, the rabbits are found all over the world on all seven continents. And there are about 20 different types of rabbits who live all over the world. Pretty common ones that we see, though, are European rabbits, like this one here. And around here in Kenosha, we really see a lot of a type of rabbit called eastern cottontails, which you know they're eastern cottontails when you can see they have like a little white fluffy tail, and the top and the bottom of their tail is white, almost like someone stuck a cotton ball to their bottom. That's why they're called cottontails. Now, rabbits are a little bit like rodents. Have you ever heard that word before, rodents? So rodents are animals like mice and squirrels. And people used to think that rabbits were a type of rodent. But in fact, we now know that they're a completely different group of animals called lagomorphs. Can you try saying that word with me? That is a very long word, lagomorph. Yeah, so they're lagomorphs, not rodents. And they're very different than rodents. So that is a pretty long word, but a pretty kind of fun word to say, I think, lagomorphs. So rabbits have two long ears that they use for listening around them so they can hear things that are sneaking around or other animals that live in the areas that they live in, so they can listen for them. But they can also use their long ears to help cool their bodies down. So when we get really warm, when we get really hot, we, our bodies sweat. We make a lot of sweat to help cool our body down. Or maybe we might use a fan to help cool our bodies down. Or even we might even have some air conditioning or a cold drink to help cool our bodies down. But rabbits don't have any of those things. They have these long ears, though, that can help cool their bodies down because when they get too hot, they pump a lot of their blood up into their ears, and then that cools them down as the wind blows against their ears. So rabbits use their ears not only for listening, but for cooling their bodies down. Pretty interesting, I think. And so rabbits that live in areas where it's very hot, like a desert, have much longer ears than the rabbits that we find around here in Wisconsin. They have a lot shorter ears because it doesn't get as hot around here for as long of the year. They, need to worry, they don't need to worry so much in winter and fall and spring about cooling their bodies down, only really in the summer. But for animals that live in deserts, they have to try to keep cool almost the whole year round. So rabbits, if you didn't know, love to eat plants. They are herbivores. Can you try saying that word with me too? Herbivore. Can we say that word really, really quietly in a super secret spy voice? Herbivores. How about, can we say that word like we're underwater? Herbivores. Yeah, so they're herbivores, which means they eat plants. So they have sharp teeth in the front of their mouth that are really sharp and flat that are good for snipping plants and cutting the plants that they like to eat. And then they have teeth in the back of their mouths that are used for grinding those plants up. So they like to eat lots of things that we find around our yards, like grass. And they like to eat dandelions and clovers and other leafy weeds that they find um, in their environments. They basically like to eat lots of plants that they can find, though. Um, so they, because they're herbivores. And rabbits are often confused with another type of animal that is very closely related to them, but actually completely different. Sometimes people call rabbits hares. And hares are a completely different group of animals. So for example, hares, when they're born, they have hair on their bodies and they're pretty good at moving around already, and their eyes are open and they can see the world around them. But when rabbits are born, 
They don't have any hair on their bodies. Their eyes don't quite work yet, and they need a lot of help from their parents. Hares also live mostly by themselves, but rabbits love to live in groups, and they like to live in groups in a big area underground called a burrow or sometimes called a warren. That's what we call the house or the place where a rabbit lives, a burrow or a warren. So like we call the place where we live a house or in the place where a fox might live is called a den. Well, the place where rabbits live is called a burrow or a warren. And hares are usually much, much larger than the rabbits that we find. They have longer, bigger ears and bigger, stronger legs on the back of their bodies for hopping. So they're even better at hopping, you might think, than rabbits. And rabbits, unlike hares, people don't keep hares as pets, but you might know someone who has a rabbit as a pet. Hares are much too big and much too wild to be kept as pets, unlike rabbits. But they're both, both very good at hopping to escape predators or animals who might like to eat them. Because since they eat plants they're, they're, and they're small, there are a lot of animals in the forest and the deserts and the places where they live that actually like to eat rabbits. And so they, since the lots of animals like to eat them, they have lots of predators. They have lots of good ways of escaping from those predators too. So ra rabbits can hop very fast. So a rabbit can hop and run about 25 to 45 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. So they're very quick. Like we talked about before, they have two ears that are good for listening for things that are sneaking around them that might want to gobble them up. So they're good at listening for predators. And if we look at the rabbit, it has an eye. Their eyes are on the sides of their head. So when a rabbit looks around, a rabbit can actually see almost all the way around its whole body while it's looking, well, when its eyes are open. Unlike us, we can't see what's going on behind us, right? We don't have eyes in the back of our head. Our eyes are in the front of our head, so we can only see what's happening in front of us. But rabbits, since their eyes are on the sides of their head, they can see all the way around them almost, almost all the way around. That's pretty cool, I think. And in fact, they're so good at seeing that in their, their vision is so good for keeping them aware of what's happening around them that rabbits also sometimes sleep with their eyes open so that they can keep an eye on what's happening around them while they're sleeping. Have you ever heard of an animal that sleeps with its eyes open? Sometimes people sleep with their eyes open too. Sometimes. <clears throat> and they have, if we look at the color of this rabbit, what sort of colors do you see? Should I get a little bit closer so you can see it a little bit better? I see lots of browns and tans and grays. Lots of colors that would help this rabbit blend in with its surroundings, blend in with the leaves that have fallen off of trees or blend in with the, the darker parts of bushes, like the branches and stuff on bushes, or even blend in with dead grass. So places where rabbits like to be, their color matches those places to help them hide, to help them camouflage a little bit better. And with all of these ways to protect themselves, you might think that rabbits would be unstoppable. But the world can be a little scary for rabbits because they're so small. They're so small, and so many animals like to eat rabbits. <clears throat> Do you ever, ever get a little bit scared? I get scared sometimes, too. In fact, in a couple weeks, we're going to be talking about spiders here on Museum Munchkins, and that's an animal that I'm really afraid of. Um, and today, our story is actually about a rabbit who has to be just a little bit brave to go outside and help his friend. In fact, our story today is called A Little Bit Brave by Nicola Kinnear. So let's read our story. A Little Bit Brave.
Logan was a stay-at-home bunny. His friend Luna was the daring one. She had new adventures every day. They sounded quite exciting, but rather frightening, too. So whenever Luna said, come out with me, it's fun, Logan said, oh, no, I'll never go outside. It's far too scary. At last, Luna had had enough. You have to come out with me. No, said Logan. You're no fun, said Luna. I'm too scared, said Logan. Sometimes, Logan, you just have to be a little bit brave, shouted Luna, and she stomped out. Ooh, looks like Luna's going on an adventure. Logan tried to have a normal morning. He watered his indoor plants. He dusted his shell collection. He baked some cookies, but nothing felt right. He was very upset. Luna had never been angry with him before. I have to make it up with her right away, he thought. There was just one problem. Luna was outside. It would be an adventure, and Logan had never had one of those. He had no idea what to pack. So he took a snorkel, a flashlight, and a tin of cookies. Then he put on his favorite scarf, gathered up all his courage, and tiptoed out. Do you think he's going to need all those things on his adventure? It was strange and noisy in the woods. There was flapping and scurrying, tweeting and rustling. I knew it would be scary, thought Logan. He took a deep breath and called, Luna! There was no reply. But lots of other animals scampered up. Luna, they said, she's the bravest bunny in the world. She dives right into the river to collect shells, said an otter. She rides around the forest on my back, said the deer. She explores the deep, dark caves and goes looking for bears, said a fox. That sounds so scary, said Logan. But if you do those things too, said a mouse, perhaps you'll find her. So that's exactly what Logan did. First he dived into the river. Splash! Brrr, it was chilly. It was lucky he'd packed his snorkel. There was a whole new world underwater. Logan saw fish and frogs and snails, but he didn't see Luna. Then he rode off with the deer. Whoosh! It was fast. It was lucky he brought his scarf to help him hold on. There was a whole new world in the woods. He saw sparrows and squirrels and butterflies, but he didn't see Luna. Then he tiptoed into a cave. Eek! It was lucky he'd packed his flashlight. There was a whole new world in the dark. He saw bats and spiders and sleeping bears. But he didn't see Luna. Logan was amazed at all the things he'd done. If only I could find Luna, he said. She'd be really proud of me. He was so pleased with himself, he decided to have a cookie. But before he could open the tin, he heard a shout. Stay back, you wicked wolf! That voice sounded very familiar. In fact, it sounded just like... Luna! Oh no, a huge, hungry wolf was trying to eat her! Logan hid behind a tree. Suddenly, he didn't feel brave at all. I want to go home, he whimpered. But he couldn't let Luna be eaten. So he picked up his cookies, gathered up all his courage, and ran. No, he cried. Don't eat Luna. Eat my cookies. 
The wolf was very surprised. Cookies, he said. I don't mind if I do. And he gobbled up the whole lot. The wolf was very friendly after that. That was amazing, cried Luna. When did you become so brave? I think it started this morning, said Logan, when I was baking cookies. Luna laughed. Shall we go home and bake some more? I'd like that, said Logan. But first, we need another adventure. The end. That was a pretty good story about being brave and helping out your friend. So that was a wonderful story and a little bit brave by Nicola Kinnear. I really liked that book. So today we are going to be making, because that bunny was so brave in that story, I thought that we could make some bunny ears of our very own to maybe go on some brave, where while we go on some brave adventures. So for this activity, we're going to need a couple pieces of paper. Well, at least I will, because I've got a pretty big noggin, so I'm gonna need a couple pieces of brown paper. You might only need one. And I'm gonna need a piece of pink paper too. And then I have some scissors, and I have a marker to help me draw on the paper before I cut it out. And then I have a stapler, which if you don't have a stapler at home, you could use tape or you could use a glue stick too, but I think I'm gonna use a stapler to help me hold all my stuff together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my brown paper and I'm going to cut out some strips. Some nice long strips, because this is gonna make the headband that will help me wear my bunny ears that I make. And I'm gonna try to make them about the same size, but if it's not perfect, that's okay. I'm just gonna try to make it close. And I'm gonna cut out three. Two might be enough, but let's cut out three just in case. Like I said, I've got a pretty big noggin. I wanna make sure this goes all the way around. All right, so now I've got my three strips of paper. And the first thing I'm gonna do before I even try to see if it will fit on my head, I'm gonna take my stapler and I'm gonna staple two of these pieces together. Cause now I can make it stretch. Oh, look, see, I definitely needed that third piece. It doesn't go all the way around my head without the third piece. So I'm going to staple this third piece on here too. Here we go. And now, hopefully, I will be able to stretch this paper all the way around my head. Yes, there we go. I'm going to make it so it's just the right size for my head. And then I'm gonna make sure I hold it right there when I take it off so I can staple it right there. You might need some help from a grown-up while you're doing this part to help you make sure that it gets to be just the right size for you. Right, and now I've got my little ring here that I can add my bunny ears to that I'm going to make. Perfect. Oh, and I forgot we've got some questions to answer too. So L would like to know if rabbits like carrots. Yes, they do. Rabbits do like carrots. Rabbits like crunchy things that they can chew on. And they especially like that because rabbits even though they're not rodents, they, their teeth grow a, lo a lot. The front teeth, their front teeth grow a lot, just like um, some rodents do, like mice and uh, squirrels and things. Their teeth, their front teeth grow a lot too. So rabbits need to chew on things to make sure that their teeth don't get too long. And crunchy carrots are great for that. So is wood. They like to chew on wood sometimes too. And anything that helps them to chew down um, those front teeth and keep their teeth nice and healthy too, like those crunchy carrots um, will help them. So I've got my marker now and I'm gonna draw a bunny ear shape on this piece of brown paper so that I can cut it out. So bunny ears are kind of long and pointy at the top, just like this. There we go, that kind of looks like a bunny ear, right? 
I can use my scissors and I'm gonna cut out this ear. And then, so that my ears match, I'm going to take this ear that I cut out, because I only have one ear right now. I'm gonna take this ear that I cut out though, and I'm gonna trace it onto my other piece of brown paper so that my ears are the same size and they match. I'm gonna take my piece of paper here, and I'm gonna, my ear that I cut out, and I'm gonna put it on my other piece of brown paper. Luckily, I grabbed two. I needed so many of those strips to make the paper go all the way around my head. And there we go. I got another bunny ear shape traced now that I can cut out. Oh, and you know what, too? Some other interesting things about rabbits. When I was doing some research to learn more about rabbits to tell you all this fun information, I also found out some more information about the biggest and the smallest rabbits that we find in the world. Can you guess how big the biggest rabbits that we find are? Remember, hares are bigger than rabbits, but there are still some pretty big rabbits out there. Do you have a guess at how big it is? So the biggest rabbit in the world is called the Flemish giant rabbit, and they can get to be over 20 pounds and four feet long when they stretch their legs out. That's a pretty big rabbit. All right, there we go. I've got my two rabbit ears like this, and now I'm going to use my pink paper to make the inside of my rabbit ears, which I guess I might need a glue stick. I might want to use my glue stick for that instead of my stapler to hold those pieces together. So just like I did when I drew my shape for my ears, I'm gonna use my marker and draw my shape on my pink paper here too. So I'm gonna draw a long shape that's pointy at the end, not quite as big as my ears that I drew because I want it to fit inside of my ears. So see, I didn't draw, it's not quite as big, but it's still the same shape. And I can cut that piece out then. And then I can trace this one again, just like I did the last one with my ears. So then the inside of my bunny ears will match too. All right, and I can get my marker again. And let's trace this shape now so I can cut out the inside of two bunny ears. There we go. I've got it traced again so I can cut this one out too with my scissors. And the smallest rabbit, so the biggest rabbit we talked about is the, the Flemish giant. Do you have any idea how small the smallest rabbit is? The smallest rabbit that we find? It's actually found here in the United States. It's called a pygmy rabbit, and they're very small. A pygmy rabbit is only about one pound. They only weigh about one pound, which is very small, and they're only about 10 inches long when they stretch out their legs, so not very long at all. All right, I'm gonna use my glue stick now to glue the pink part of my bunny ears onto the brown part of my bunny ears. Right in the middle, just like this. There you go, so I'll show you so you can see, just like that. And I have to do the other one too. And luckily, glue sticks don't take very long to dry if we just use a little bit of glue. And we don't need very much glue to hold this bunny ear, these bunny ear pieces together. And I'm gonna stick my other inside of my bunny ear on this one. Perfect, and now I've got two bunny ears and now all I need to do is attach them to my bunny ear headband that I made before. So I'm gonna take one of my ears and I think right about there, that looks good. And I'll use my stapler and I'll stick that one on, just like this. Perfect, and now 
I don't want to spread them apart too far. I think, how about right about there? That looks good to me. And then I'll take my stapler and stick this one on too. And now I am all ready to go on some brave bunny adventures, just like we read about in our story today. Thank you guys so much for visiting with us today and watching Museum Munchkins. Next week, I hope you'll join us too because we're going to be upstairs in one of our exhibits talking all about a very, very, very big animal, the giraffe. And I, so I hope you join us next week for that and we'll see you then. <laughs>